Welcome back team. This is the second video on the data type timestamp. Here you can see that I'm going to create a table in like a bank that has the account number, the account balance, and a timestamp. Then here are my four management columns. That should be added to all tables. You can see here that I'm about to do an insert statement into this table and I'm going to do it for this account number. Their account balance is 300 and then I'm going to populate the create date and the create users as these values. You'll notice that I did not touch the timestamp because we had learned in our first video that timestamp is automatically done by SQL Server. So let's create this table and let's see it over here. Refresh and there it is right there. Let me show you the columns. There's our timestamp column. And now I'm going to do an insert. I'm going to insert this one row in there and then timestamp is going to fire and it's going to give us some value. So, so now we have that. Let's actually see kind of like all the data that's in there right now. So you can see that when I initially called this right here, I put in account 001, 300, and these two values. This one was generated for me. Now, 7DA is a value that we need to figure out. So I'm going to come in here and go in hex mode, 7DA, and that is the number 2010. 2010. Now we can also do this through uh, select statements using cast. So I can say cast that timestamp and I want to cast it as an integer. So in the database, it's a timestamp, a hexadecimal number, but I can turn that around and make it look like an integer. And that number is 2010 and that's the same thing we got here. So this hex value in decimal is 2010. Okay. So now I have to take you through the story. So imagine I'm at a bank and I give my account number to the bank clerk and the clerk pulls up my account balance and I have $300. I just have $300 here. At the same time, I open up my bank app on my cell phone and the phone app says I also have $300. And my goal on my cell phone is I want to Vimo someone 250 bucks. So now both apps query my timestamp at the same time or within the same transaction. And that current timestamp value will be used against my, my account when it's executed. So when I execute this statement, can you imagine the bank teller and my cell phone saying, hey, the current timestamp value is 2010. Then what happens is, I'm then going to try to do an update statement and I'm going to say, hey, update this record. I'm going to take out 250. You know, my new balance will be 50 with that current timestamp. So it, will this be 2010? Did I get 2010 from this? And then this will work. But as I taught you in the previous lesson, when I do the update command, what happens is this number, this timestamp value will increment. So it will go to 2011, 7DB. Okay, so then immediately, like within a millisecond, I'm going to try to do that same command, but I'm going to try to take out $290, leaving me a $10 balance. But here you can see where TS equals timestamp. Well, current timestamp equals 2010. This one will equal 2011. It equals 2011 because this previous statement tickled it and said, hey, I want you to auto increment. So let's, uh, let's run this. And this is what the timestamp is all about. It has nothing to do with time or dates. It has everything to do with concurrency. All right, so let's execute this and go. All right, cool. So we see that the timestamp value went to 7db, which would be clear, 7db, which would be your 2011, and I have the bank clerk. 
So this first one was successful. The second one failed. And that is what timestamp is used for. A lot of time it's used in banking. Pretty much any time I really have two users hitting the system, I should be using timestamp. And it prevents people from overriding the first person's value. So there you have it, timestamp, data type, SQL Server.